Hey, Jonathan, how you doing, man? I'm okay. You know what I like about our podcast? What's that? We are all over the place. Mm-hmm. You said it so perfectly when we were watching the movie, Jared. Yeah? What was this it? This is a copycat killer. Ooh! Ooh. A fucking remake. Firestarter. Yeah, the last 20 minutes of it? Pure fire. <laughs> it was just a really annoying. But like real fire. Yeah. I mean, people I wish... probably died uh, during the making <laughs> of that movie. I uh, wish uh, the original Firestarter had Drew Barry less. <laughs> I, I know I said it before, but I want to say it for the podcast. Rewatched the original Firestarter because we had to go down into the basement, mm-hmm. plump, 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 and pull out the cold case files. The comparison of the yes. original for yes. the copycat killer that's uh, coming out this Friday. Yes. Firestarter. Okay. Came out in 1984. Just watched it. From Universal Pictures. Hey. The budget was $12 million. That's, wow. $12 million. You are a movie maker today and someone's like, all right, kid, I'll give you $12 million. You'd yeah. go, no, that's not enough. <laughs> it won't work. That's what people would say. But $12 million, yeah. like, holy shit. Yeah. That's, a, that's a nice budget back then. <sighs> Nowadays, that's piss. <laughs> holy shit. It's the value of the American dollar has really gone downhill. Welcome to Political Talk. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it had a budget of $12 million. And I couldn't find where it made worldwide. So, mm. you know, I guess back in 1984... Uh, the American dollar was all that mattered. Damn okay, straight. Uh, so domestically, it made seventeen million dollars. That's a winner. Which is uh, how much did they get in the pocky there? Do the math real quick. Give uh, me a second. I'll do the math. Yeah, no problem. Give me a uh, second. Five here. million dollars. Is it? <laughs> I just pulled out my calculator, and now you're telling me it's five million. Why'd I even do this? Take your time. No, forget just, it. Uh, check my math. No. Nah. <laughs> Okay, I got a Fucking question. I got a watch here with a calculator for nothing. Now, I know you uh, weren't alive for several more years. Uh, Why do you keep bringing. What? I don't understand. Are you trying to be like Jonathan's an ignorant little idiot child? You told me that I Are was trying the to make fun of me? senior detective. <laughs> God damn, I should be retired. I today. feel like. <laughs> <laughs> Getting too old for this shit. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to tell you, there's a couple movies I'm probably going to throw at you that you never heard of yet. What? Okay. You know what? I'm getting so, real tired in the <laughs> fucking ages and what the fuck's going on here? In the box office. Jeez. Oh, hey, mister. You have this. Hey, mister. What's a box office, mister? Like, what's well, going on? It's a uh, place that uh, people went to go see movies. Okay, so you're going to tell us uh, in the box office uh, at the time when this movie came out? Yeah, top okay. five. Okay. So opening movie. Yes. Firestarter. Okay. Came out that weekend. Boom. Along with The Natural. Uh, oh, is that a baseball movie? Yes. It is. Correct. I guess. With Robert Redford. Oh, who's a Robert Redford? You mean Robert Redford starring the great Waldo Pepper? Oh, looks like I do know a couple things. Are I think you looking at the poster the right behind me? <laughs> it was a time of heroes, daredevils, living only to fly. And Waldo, who lived only only to outfly the rest. I think that was the tagline. Is but it? I can't remember because I'm just a young, dumb Detective. Something to aspire to. I'll tell I'm you that much right now. Okay. You got top five in the box office in 1984. Okay. The Natural. Boom. 16 Candles, Romancing the Stone, Firestarter, and Breakin. Breakin uh, was I know all a, those besides I think a dancing movie. Was it? Yeah. Because it was like the famous sequel was Breakin' to Electric Boogaloo. Which ranking do you think Firestarter got in competing against those movies? Uh, I'm going to go, that was five? I'll tell you what, I'm Romancing s- the Stone at that time had already been in the box office for seven weeks. So I'm trying to decide, so with five. my detective, my rookie detective skills, I'm trying to figure out in that opening week where it ranked. Yeah, competing Number against three. 60. Can you see through this? No. Could you? Come on, come on, baby. You have two other papers. God damn it, you're right. <laughs> yes! Oh, baby! <laughs> Number one was The Natural. Now, Natural mm. and Firestarter came out on the same week, and they were competing against each other. Yeah. Now, I don't know what's competing against Firestarter this weekend. Is nothing? Is it coming out by itself, just like our past movie, Memory? Possibly. And then we have uh, 16 Candles, Romancing the Stone, and Breaking. Man, who doesn't love 16 that? Candles? Yeah. that's a, was, is, that, is 16 Candles also uh, John Hughes? You know what's crazy about him? He would just write a movie in like a week. Honestly. He like would a just, weekend? Yeah, he'd just be like, oh, hang on, what do you want? Oh, that's a shit. <laughs> Wait, what is he doing? <laughs> Snorting. And, oh, then, yeah. and then he'd just come out with a movie, and you're like, wow, this is gold. 
what's going on? Like that's that's so, and you know who else yeah. does that? Yeah. <laughs> Bring it back around, Stephen King with his books. No. <laughs> well, tell me about all the actors that uh, you recognized from the 1984 Firestarter, and tell me uh, what do you Martin, think their performance were like? Martin Sheen. Here's the thing: Martin Sheen wasn't on set for the. I'm assuming wasn't on set for this movie, thinking, "Oh shit, The Shining came out," and in the Hollywood world i feel like possibly people were still writing that you know oh a stephen king adaptation ooh la la i need to be in it type shit charlie sheen was great johnny raintree or whatever who was that george c scott because that's just like he has that old school cool about him you know seems like kind of guy has strong hands like he's been doing a job his whole life like masonry and he just has real tough bear fucking stone hands so i like him i like him whatever he's in Drew Barrymore, I'm just going to fucking say it now. And I've had it a secret for my whole life. I'm 30. I kept it a secret. And just between you and me, if we could turn the mics off for a second. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They're off. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm not a fucking fan of Drew Barrymore. Oh. I don't get the appeal. I don't get it. She's like America's sweetheart. She's not a fucking... There's been so many American sweethearts. She's not America's sweetheart. I like Drew Barrymore in talk show interviews. <laughs> yeah, she gets up on uh, David Letterman's uh-huh. talk show table. Yeah. Flashes him. Right. It happened in like 1996. That does nothing for me. I think you were like two years old. Oh my God. (laughs) You love bringing that up, huh? That does nothing for me. She was really funny on a SNL skit. And they're just like, "Uh, one job you wouldn't want, what would it be? And I think she's like monkey strangler or something. (laughs) Do you think she tried to say wrangler? No, no. I think think that was the joke. Like it was a Freudian slip? I think it was just like, what job wouldn't you want? And I think she said something like stabbing monkeys. Well, nobody would want that job. Right. Okay, so There's such a look of disgust. Let me ask right you this, there. yeah, uh, senior detective, since you're the senior 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 detective. <laughs> okay, so check this out, dude. Carrie, the first movie that came out, they made that movie for 1.8 million dollars. I'm sorry, you said dude, but it's Officer Mano. Oh too. god, detective. Yeah. <laughs> sorry for the disrespect. <laughs> uh, made 33 million dollars. That's so hilarious because you can't even make a That's crazy. double mint fucking gum commercial for a million dollars. Who got paid? It was the 70s, baby. Yeah, I can't believe that. Okay, so... 70s was easy. Do a little smack, get in your Lambo. What did you think of that movie, Carrie? Did you ever watch it? Yeah, the original? With John Travolta. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, he's not here. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I feel think. so bad for him, John Travolta. John Travolta? Holy cow. Why? His life is just one tragedy uh, after another. You know what? It is sad. Son passed away. His wife that, passed away. Yeah, that does... it. it here, here's something I just want to say, not that it's not a tragedy, because it is. Yeah. What I find so interesting is a celeb- something horrible happens to a celebrity, like losing a child or a spouse. Yeah. Um, but that happens all the time to regular people. Yeah. Not to say it's not sad, because it's John Travolta. It's yeah. obviously just as sad. Yeah. But I feel like people have more of a shock, like, oh, my God. It's like, yeah. well, isn't it because corner. that they also like had a... Like an amazing life, you're blown away. Yeah, you're just like, how's that possible? Oh man, they had it all. Right. So, am I the senior detective or you? No, that's true. I fucking figured that shit out at like 15. (laughs) I was like, oh, I guess it doesn't matter who you are. I still worship Hollywood. (laughs) I do too, but the glitz and glam is gone of Hollywood, and now it's just a fucking pathetic shadow of what it once was. Especially now. You know what it is? Good looking fucking guy from Oklahoma goes out to L.A. Maybe just some roles here and there. Whoa, big up and comer. <gasps> He's a star. Starts doing drugs. Slows down a bit. Really gets down on his luck. Turns to trash. Now he's a fucking skinny ass bum on the side <laughs> corner wearing pajamas begging for cash. And that's fucking Hollywood now. I flipped. I used to go, whoa, big Hollywood blockbuster. Let me go to the theater. Yeah. And now I'm just kind of like, fuck that. Oh, a little independent film that costs $100,000 to make. I hope it's good. And most of the time, they're good because the people making them a lot of passion over fil- paycheck. Yes, P P P yes, P over P. Sure. So when they don't have the things they need, they figure something else out. And then when you're making a movie with the yeah. weird way you decided to do it, oh, we don't have money for the CGI, or we can't get real hookers. <laughs> get into the mic when you get it. If you're gonna um, talk like that, I want that yeah, right, right in the mic. So when you can't get that stuff, you yeah. come up with a clever way to do it. And of then course. It's, and then it's on the movie, and yeah. you're just like. Oh, it came out better than if somebody just gave us a hundred million for the CGI, and it'd be like that's piss. I hundred so percent agree. With that's you. why a lot of independent films are just better now, and I feel like the people behind the camera, and the people directing, the people doing everything and editing if, care. If they Hollywood have, now is just money, please, money. They have please, too many resources. Money, please. Okay, let's origi- get back on track. So huh. the original 1984 Firestarter. Yes, I think the biggest problem with that movie that I had Cold ultimately case. was it was a father and daughter on the run. They really didn't have a place to go. Tennessee. They did, but what was in Tennessee? Who fucking Nothing. knows? Nothing. And yeah. then maybe that's why they thought they can escape there, and then no one would follow. They didn't them explain no the shop came. more. Like, yeah. there's a lot of things where it's just like it wasn't an acronym. I don't or something. Right. I don't feel 
mm. anything when right. men in suits are chasing a father and daughter. No. I was just like, this what is What did you dumb. want? No, when you when you turned over and whispered in my ear, what did you what did you say you wanted in that movie? <laughs> what did I whisper in your ear? Yeah, you said lovers. Yes. I was like, what what? Here's the problem. I gotta turn on the lights. Anybody <laughs> listening, if you want to watch the film, oh, it's not off. really that yeah, it's not really that pleasant. Don't look. It's not really that pleasant. It's just Watch the film, and you tell me. Tell me if the dad and Drew Barrymore was replaced by his girlfriend. The lines match up. Like, uh, I yeah. love being near you. You make me feel safe. You'll always be safe when I'm around. Yeah, very handsy. So I did. Yo, what the fuck was that shit, dude? Yeah, there's She's a like lot of eight, that. and people are like touching her yeah. legs and yeah. shit. Really Who caressing. Who fucking does that? A lot of caressing going on. I don't on fucking. In that movie. I don't like that. I Too got a weak caress. heart. I can't see shit like that. No, no, no. It makes me squirmish. That's so why you kept leaning over to me, huh? Ugh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, turn it off. <laughs> Um, so watching the movie, I realized that the whole action scene on the third act, but it's action for the sake of action that didn't really matter anymore it, because everybody that we cared about, the main villain, yeah. had already been killed. Johnny Raintree? Yeah. Johnny Rainstorm? Yeah. Johnny Storm? <laughs> Johnny Appropriation? <laughs> Nah, you know, fuck that, man. That was an appropriation. Oh, it certainly no, was. No, there's some characters that could pull off that shit. That, what's his name? George C. Scott? I bet you there's an interview with him going, my great-grandpa was was 3 points two. Like the Johnny Depp's defense 3. right 2 now against Amber Heard. He's like, I was Native American. That's why I was allowed to play Tonto in is The Is that Lone what he Ranger. said? Yeah, of course. I fuck him, and I guarantee you That's what this whole was. case is about. You didn't know that? That'd be it. Well, that was the problem. Something. Now, yes. okay, so the oh, problem at the end of the film, just yeah. explosions for the sake of explosions. It didn't matter anymore. But can I tell you something and about I hope that? They fix that in this one. Can I detective the detective? Go ahead, boy to man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you like that, Jerry? Yeah, I did. I'm a guy. I like entertainment. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Yeah. If you have a movie and there's boobies and robots, and I'll be like, that was awesome. That's fine as long as it was actually awesome. But like you just said, with no reason, it's build it up. Yeah. Make me hate the shop. I like the shop. I like everybody working at the shop. Yeah. The people at the shop didn't bother me. The shop, as by as the I'm way, concerned, they're the society. ones responsible for all her powers and making her feel special. That's right. The shop, or just just let everyone know, the shop uh, in the 1980-whatever uh, version, they are basically like the bad guys. It's well, yeah. Cla- it's a classic case of you have powers, and we're yeah. going to try and take you as a child, raise you as an adult, and use you as a weapon. Uh, in that sense, they also then oh, own they them. Owned, oh, my God. You just went legal. Yeah, exactly. that's not for us. That's for the attorney general. Yeah, don't even bring that shit up. <laughs> well, I'm. I gotta bring. Let up me ask you a question. This is habeas corpus. So let me ask here, you. And I'll put the system on trial. <laughs> you just said big ways. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Two questions, three questions, and then let's get into the new fire starter. Love. That's it. what we care about. I'm gonna tell you three movies. One of them will be a movie that was adapted into a Steve, from a Stephen King book. Oh, the other two it. are just going to be horror movies that exist, and okay. you need to tell me which one is the adaptation of a Stephen King novel. First Let's answer, see. Green Mile. Oh, nailed it. Fuck. Okay, <laughs> question two. Shawshank Redemption. Oh, oh, okay, hang on. Okay, you're down to three questions. <laughs> Are you ready? These I'll, are not I'm, twist off. I'm just going to fucking ask you. Well, they're twist off for ah! me. Jared, I twist them off. What's no, wrong? No, they're not. Oh, that's weird. I've what do been, you got? I've been twisting them off. You got those time. George C. Scott hands <laughs> over there? Dude, you can tell he's got big hands. Fuck. Okay, you ready? Hold on. Let's see. Okay. Which one of the three I'm about to say, which one was adapted from a Stephen King novel? The Old Dark House, 1408. That's the answer. And you fucking bastard. <laughs> okay, let me, let me give you one more. Let me give you one more. Okay, go. 1922. That's starring Tom Jane. Is that Tom Jane? Yeah, I think Man, he went it. from that to Apache Junction. <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? You know what? I'm not You're coming up. You're saying that he sailed up to I'm the not good. fucking coming up no, with no, games no, 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 Nah, no, games no. are dumb. Those are great. You know what? You've Those been here great. a long time. You don't care about the force. Who's been here You want to retire, time. and I'm a new cop trying to the make a name for myself. Talk. Games are dumb. Cheers. I'm not choosing you. You just ruined the games. No, I didn't. Okay. I I feel like you gave up a little bit too easy. Dumb question. I'm just like, was it Green Mile? Yeah, that's right. Good job, Jared. Okay, was it the old dark house? Carrie. Oh, yeah, you did it, Jared. Well. Good job. That's funny because Good dark house. I wanted to play the same game with you. Did you? Yeah. Well, I'll be respectful s- and I'll let you finish the fucking question. It's true. Sorry, Jared. I'm, I just I'm a quarter of a beer in. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get your pants up. Here, let me just describe pants too tight for Let you, me describe way? to all my uh, all the blind listeners or Anyone listening to this since we don't have a video. Yeah. Um, I'm 5'9", and I weigh 218 pounds. It doesn't take a mathematician to realize that's an unattractive human. What are you talking about? Well, let me tell you this. There's yeah. football players oh. that are 5'9", yeah. that are 218 pounds. 
Who do you think they look like? Yeah. <laughs> they don't look like me. All right, all right, all, <laughs> all right. right. Back to the fucking. Too, oh, being... my other question for you. Yeah, Sorry, go. and then I'll uh, let you go since you're me. senior. Now we went down to the basement of our precinct in the junk, and uh, past the cobwebs and all that stuff, we pulled out a VHS copy of Firestarter 1984. Perfect. But did you go even deeper, Jared? Did you really go to the cold, cold case? Did you read the book of Firestarter? I did not. Okay. Read the book. Go Let ahead. me tell you. Did you read the book? No. Books Whoa, are for, you read the book? No. Books oh. are for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> you got the book on, on tape? Nope. You just listened to it? Nope. You know how many unread books I have at my house? Well, let's hear it. More than read. Because <laughs> I always get excited for a book, and then I get myself all giddy. I'm just like, oh, wait, I could read this. And then I grab it, and I buy it. And I go home, and I open it, and then I just, I just, I'm not a book guy. I'm. It's also a skill that I didn't learn. Reading? Or, yeah, like. <laughs> you didn't learn to go, read? Well, I read a 200-page book in, yeah. like, over the weekend. Yeah, That's not something I don't, I don't do. Think, first off, I don't think 200 is a lot in a book. So you that's really, a, really, you really just showed your education in book reading. I could be, you give me a twenty-page book, I still couldn't crack it. Oh, you're same with me, man. No, like un. By the way, unopened yeah. books. I'm talking about Dr. Seuss type shit. Yeah. Un- <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. What I wanted to look into: How financially feasible is it to profit off of remakes of horror movies? You want my answer before you start going? Sure. Like, what are your thoughts about it? It is so... If the tra- the movie does not have to be that good. Right. If the trailer's good and the movie's trash, you're still going to blow out the fucking box office for the name alone. I think a movie that has a good following and then is remade, you're always... I honestly, truly feel like you're always going to make your money back. Now I'm also thinking about the new Nightmare on Elm Street and egg on my face... <laughs> All right, so the first one that I found was Carrie. Okay. So, again, just going back to that, with a budget of $1.8 million, Jesus. domestically made $33 million. You know the things I would do for $1 million right now? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was done bucks. by United Artists. Then, also, Metro Gold Mayor MGM. MGM. Their hotel in Vegas has lions in a cage. Well, it used to. You could go in there, and you could go underneath the plexiglass cage, and there's lions up there. You can see their paws. Jonathan, you remember when you said that the one thing that you wish you wouldn't do on the podcast is talk about gambling? <laughs> well, no, oh, side there, is, there is that. No, you're right. I, I did want to talk to you about I know. You gave me you three lashes for sidetracking last time. <laughs> so sorry. Go ahead. I'll you're keep, like, I'll keep my little like, mouth I'm shut. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. And I'm like, yeah. no, that's the entertaining part of the it's podcast. Not. It's not. Nope. Entertain- I'll keep my you fat comedic fucking release. mouth shut. And I'm the nerd who talks about inflation and money and stuff like that. So Not nerd enough to read a book, though, huh? So what was, how do you pronounce MGM? Metro Goldwyn Mayer? John Mayer? I think it's Meyer. Meyer? I think so. No. So they decided to get the sequel made to Carrie called Carrie 2, The Rage. Which year? You know, that would have been really good to have. Oh, shit, I should have really got that. Why didn't I put the dates on Who there? gives a shit? I won't ask about the dates. All right, so top five Give in the box me, baby. was Cruel Intentions. Oh, I love Cruel Intentions. Baby Geniuses. I did not see that. The Corruptor. I did not see that. I haven't even heard of that one. Oh. Analyze this. I've seen that. The Rage Carry 2. Uh, the Rage Carry 2 was uh, fifth. No, no, stop. Fourth. Done. Come on, baby. Fourth. Fourth? That oh. is incorrect. Oh, fucking hell. It came out in number two in the box office. Really? Competing against Baby Geniuses and The Corruptor. Analyze <laughs> this took number one, but The Rage Carry 2. Yeah. Number two. Wait, in Cruel office. Intentions was fifth? Third. Third. Oh, third. Yeah. Okay. Man, my math is... Cruel Intentions has, and Analyzes had been out in the box office for two weeks at that point. Well, that would have been That's nice crazy, know. huh? So basically, with a budget of $21 million, domestically it only made $17 million. Ah, you so see what I'm saying? So they lost money. Do you see what I'm fucking saying? You see, that's pathetic. So you were thinking God. about what's better. That's... Like a direct mm, sequel? That's an empty pocky right there, and they don't like that in the biz. No, they you don't. want money in the pocky so you can buy a nice piece of cake, and you're not buying cake with that. So do you think it would be better... To make a sequel or to make a remake of like um, just a classic. Well, it all depends on a bunch of things. Okay. Was the original successful? You want me to throw out an example? Yeah. Ghostbusters. Yeah. We had a complete yeah. reboot trash oh, dog yeah, not remake trash and everyone I'm with kept praising it. And During the movie? No, no, afterwards. Oh. Like, oh, that was funny. Because I got mad, and I was like, how was it funny? What was good about it? And they're just like, blah, 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 blah. Years later, 
the same people are just like, yeah, that movie did suck. And I, and, and, and I, my, ooh, I do my face went red. I was like, just say it sucks in the moment. Don't like who are you trying to suck off. Well, that's the thing. It's the crowd. The it crowd, is the all the talk was saying that. Oh, this I is such it. a great movie. So it's bad. Be good. Blah so blah blah blah. There's blah. your example. Okay. Uh, a remake, horrible. What do they come out with now? Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel. Sequel, the third installment, mm. dog shit. No, so I think I it know. all just comes down. To- just watch the original. Yeah. Just have a good oh, time. Man. Uh, later on, uh, this would be Carrie, just the a remake. Oh, what year was that? 2016. Yeah, I, I was such an idiot. I forgot to put the dates on here. It's My okay. captain's I, gonna be so fucking <laughs> mad at me that I didn't put any dates. You've on always been bad at paperwork. <laughs> god damn it! Oh god damn it! It's old. My eyes. That's hilarious. Get my cheaters on. Okay. Uh, 2013. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Remake. Okay, 2013. Get off your phone because I'm testing you. Oh, okay. Okay. So gravity. This fucking trivia. Captain Phillips. Carrie. Escape plan. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Deuce. Wait, wait, wait. Gravity with Sandra Bullock? Yep. Came out in 2013? Yeah, it was three weeks in the box office by it the came time out, hang on, Carrie It came out in 2013? Uh, yeah, that's when Carrie oh, sh- came out. Maybe I fucked up on my phone. Oh, Whatever. My okay, give me him again. There's Carrie, so, Gravity, Cloud of the Chance of Meatballs 2. That fucking movie's great. Escape Plan, the one with Stallone and Schwarzenegger, I think. No, that didn't do good. And Captain Phillips. I'm uh, the captain now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, uh, you're not. Look at me. Yeah, and if Captain heard that right <laughs> now, <laughs> he'd be in so much fucking trouble because he runs this precinct, bitch. Ah, fuck, I always forget your questions. Carrie placed it, third. It, it, that is correct. Yes, <laughs> Carrie came out at number three. Can I can I give you a little secret? When I really don't know the answer, yeah, I do what I do in high school and I just do the middle. Yeah, <laughs> it's smart. I'm going C, baby. Remaking that movie instead of making a direct sequel. Yeah, came out. With $35 million domestically. So okay. it made a profit of $5 million. Okay, but now look at the original. $1 million to, what'd you say? $33 million. Hey, there you go. Come now on. those were like $1970. Jesus Man, Christ, you and your inflation. Whoa. Well, let me do the Please. calculus and figure out, oh, well, a penny I, then is worth six pennies now. Pretty pretty much. Me. So I did one more that I want to talk to you about. Okay. This one's called Pet Cemetery. Oh, uh, wait, the remake? Yeah. Uh, or the new, or the original? Pet Cemetery, the original. Pet Cemetery 2, starring Eddie Furlong from Terminator 2. That's right, John Connor himself. And then I also did oh God. the remake completely, Pet Cemetery. Okay, can I, can I give you an impression? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, this is an impression of my brother yeah. doing an impression I love of it. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wait, David's like our only listener. Yes. Is this going to be nice to him? Nope. Uh, and this is me impersonating David and impersonating Arnold Schwarzenegger. Get your hands off my cookies, Goggin. <laughs> and we're going to lead right into Pet Cemetery. <laughs> All right, here we go. 1989. Oh, good. Captain, I put the numbers on there. I put the years on these ones. Okay. Good job, Jared. Oh, thank, thank you. That's so, captain sounds. In 1989. Really quick, just in yeah. case listeners are lost, yeah. what are we doing right now? Well, I, I, okay. So we did carry. Mm-hmm. We talked about the original. Right. The sequel. Right. The remake. But right now you are just uh, talking about Stephen King adaptations that yep. have been made in, yeah. into movies yep. from his little books. Yep. And you're right now you're talking about the box office numbers when they came out. Yes. Okay. Just in case when they anybody came got lost. Out, how well they did yep. financially yes. compared to that is what a box office numbers sequel? are. Mm-hmm. Or ah, okay. I see what you're <laughs> remake. Paramount Pictures comes yes. out with Pet Cemetery with a budget of fifteen million dollars. Uh, that movie scared the shit out of me as a child. Keep Domestically, going. it made fifty-seven million. Wait, what was the budget? Fifteen. Nineteen eighty-nine. So, on its first week in the box office, it was competing against. Let's see. Say anything. What face is Say that? anything. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just say <laughs> anything. Uh, uh, Major League. Oh, yeah, Rain baby. Man. No, Rain Man. No, Rain Man. Man, you went, to, you went from a movie of, I wish I was in that, and then to a movie where it was like, I'm glad I'm not in that. No, I never heard of this. The Dream Team. I never heard of that. Uh, dream Team? Well, I'm just, okay, I don't know what it is. Is go. it like some type of shit with the basketball players of the Olympics? What is that? I don't know. Is it like a bunch of people to help a child dream? A dream team? I, I probably starred Robin Williams and like, <laughs> <laughs> and like Robin Kurt Williams Russell or something. And Rob They're fucking like with their arms around each other. It's some bromance. <laughs> look it up. Look it up. Look it up. Okay. Oh, my God. The dream team. What is that? Beep, what is it? Beep, beep, Keep beep, going. Beep, beep. Okay. So Pet Cemetery opened up at 
Number one in the box office. It's opening weekend. Oh, I thought I was guessing, but okay. No, you said you didn't want to. But I no, I said I did want to. Check this out. 1989. This is so sad. Okay. 19 weeks in the box office. What was? I'm going to ask you this. Wait, wait. What was? I'm going to make you guess. Okay. Okay. Out of Major League. Yes. Say anything. Uh The Dream Team. Uh Rain Man. Uh Which one? You think it was still in the top five after 19 weeks in the oh, box office. Oh, man. I'm going to go. But okay, my choice is. I don't know what the dream team is. I looked it up. I don't care. I'm going to go between Pet Cemetery. No, no, no. That just came out number one. <sighs> so out of the four, You're Major League, me. say anything. <laughs> okay. Just say anything. God damn it, Jonathan. Just say anything. Are the you telling me team? the answer right now? No. <laughs> and Rain Man. Rain Man. No, 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 no. Rain Man. Fuck. Is that your final answer? You want to phone a friend? I will phone myself, and I'll say, Dream Team. Fuck it. All in, baby. I love gambling. Well, you were right the first time. No, you- <laughs> fucking shit. I always do that Never shit, Never go against your instincts. <laughs> you want to think? <laughs> Dude, God I always, damn it. I always do that we shit. We always talk about that on the force. Dude. I'm saying, it. this yep. guy's the fucking yep. killer. This guy's yep. the fucking killer. Yep. And then you're like, Jared, I'm yep. all in. Yep. And as soon as I turn around, yep. you fucking backtrack. I know. And you pick the Dream Team. Do you want to know why? why? Do you want to know why? Oh, no. I don't no, know. No, we're not here yet. We're not here yet in our relationship. I don't want to know the truth yet. You just keep lying to me until we are best friends forever. Okay. Okay. Keep going. I, right. I won't interrupt or sidetrack anymore. Oh, okay, perfect. No, 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 no. The sidetrack is what brings the humanity to our podcast, and which brings back our listeners as your brother. Do not <sighs> click the bottle cap when we're fucking recording. This is why you're divorced three <laughs> times. This is why you fucking stir coffee with other people's pens like Rucker Howard. <laughs> <laughs> in split second. All right, damn it. That hit too close to home. Damn these sidetracks. That that hit way too close to home. All right, go ahead. No more sidetracks. Can we talk about the new fucking fucking fire starter? No, No. not yet. Man, you are really gotta figure out if it's Oh my god. Are you so into this fucking cold case because you were part of the original case? Yes! Oh, you are old. All that when I was watching the original, it's just it brought back way too many memories. (laughs) Brought back it did it unzipped me. It unzipped me, Doc. Okay, so in 1992, you weren't even born yet, but I was 12 years old. Oh, really? What yeah. month? It's not listed. I was born in January. Oh, <laughs> I think you're right. You were still sucking on your mom. No, actually. Delete that, Jared. Because of reason. That was very inappropriate. No, it's okay. You know, it's not. It's, that's a medical term. <laughs> when a baby's born, they say, yeah, and then he's going to suck on the mother. Sucking on the mom. Uh, for, re- for medical reasons, I don't even know. I, I couldn't breastfeed. What? Yeah, the doctor said I had weak lips. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I had to be spoon no, fed formula. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. That's why my muscles are <laughs> Oh god! I just unzipped way too much. No, really, oh, it's no. true. My muscle development. <laughs> That's, I was I was spoon fed a very expensive formula as a child. Uh, That's why my muscle development's all wonky. I'm in the lowest percentile for uh, everything in my life. For weak lips. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there with weak lips like me. <laughs> with a budget. Are you, are, you, are you tired of straws being too much? Dollars. Do you want to do a commercial on that? Booty. Yeah, I, here, let me give you a commercial off the top of my head. Go, fuck, go, fuck. Hey, are you like me? Are you tired of your lips being too weak for straws? Are you upset when you kiss a beautiful woman and your lips bruise? Are you tired of trying to chew gum and your lips start to bleed? Have fun living like that, you weak lip bastard. Sponsored by men with strong lips. You gotta give them a solution, though. What do they get? Kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm bad at commercials. That was great. No. You know me. I don't do commercials mm. no more. All right. So this is the sequel ah. from Pet Cemetery coming out. What's it called? Pet Cemetery Two. God, fuck. That's clever. All right. Had a budget of eight million dollars. Okay, that's a lower budget. It is because they knew it was coming. Then the original of fifteen million dollars. Righto. So with a budget of eight million, made a domestic box office of seventeen million dollars. Now it came out. Hey, against. that's money in the pocket, baby. That's what I'm talking Woo! About. In the biz, they love the producers salivate for that shit. In the box office already was Unforgiven at four weeks, Single White Female at three weeks, and Death Becomes Her at five weeks. You're gonna really make me do this right now. Unforgiven is that starting Clint Eastwood? That's right. 
You go like, oh yeah. my god, you're gonna make me do this. My uncle Vinny came and visited a couple months ago to Arizona. That's where we live, and of course, there's a lot of cowboy shit here. My uncle Vinny loves cowboy shit. He's at the house now. Keep in mind, he has bestus, which is an eye disease that deteriorates the vision in the eye. You know, like those little floaties in your eye. Oh, Sounds damn. like the worstest to me. Anyway, <laughs> here's the thing: we're sitting at home. I have Prime on. He's like, Jonathan, what are you doing? I, go, I don't know. I want to watch a movie. <laughs> Wait, was that discovered by uh, Richard Bestus? <laughs> sure. <laughs> So he's, I'm like, I don't know, I'm going to watch He's like, movie. actually, my name is Richard Worstis, <laughs> but that is the worstest last name anybody could ever have. Actually, I always wanted to have the bestest last name <laughs> that anybody could ever want. So bestest. I'm changing it. Legally, right now, after bestest. I discovered all those little floaties in your eyes. Bestest. Um, anyway, so he's like, do you want to watch a movie? I was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. He was like, oh, oh, let's watch a really good Western. I'm like, okay, I'm not a Western aficionado, but I know some Westerns that are entertaining. And he goes... Do they have Unforgiven? And I'm like, great. Clint East? I'll, that's what they call him in the biz. I'll put it on. I rent it. It's $3.99 on Amazon. Thank you, Jeff Bezos. The movie was fucking Snorfest. I was bored out of my mind. He kept saying, wait, wait. Here comes the good part. Until it was over? Until it was, I'm guessing the good part's the credits? Because nothing fucking happened. Oh, it makes you want to yearn for those credits. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm so, yearn for credits before. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jared. Please don't hit me again. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Well, that's the only way you learn. Back on track. It's the only way you learn. Because I was raised in the 80s where something wasn't working right. You just hit it with a hammer. <laughs> so, honeymoon uh, in Vegas. Unforgiven. Yep. Single white female. Never. I don't, what is Pet that? Pet Cemetery 2. Uh -huh. Death Becomes Her. Okay, I don't. I only know what where two of those are. Where do you think Pet Cemetery 2 ranked in the box office? Oh, fuck. Here we go again. Three... God, but really, my answer is actually... Dude, you're on fire. Yes, because that's what my answer really was. Three. Fire starter. <laughs> right there. No, Number three oh, in the box office. Yes. Brought to you by the same distribution company and studio. Gem Studios. Nope. Gem Paramount, Paramount Pictures. Paramount Pictures. They Whoever heard of the them? Of this shit. right Oh. So, a budget of $8 million made domestic box office of $17 million. Now, I want to bring you to 2019. Huh? Yep, that's right. In the box office was Dumbo, the remake. That's a Stephen King novel. Us. <laughs> Us is the Jordan Peele movie. Um, it's a horror movie. The Tethered People? Yes, it's the Tethered People. Yeah. And you know what, dude? I'm fucking tired of it. People jacking off Jordan Peele. You don't want to see Nope. Uh, no, see, but that's the fucking problem. Yeah. I'm gonna he got see, you back in. He reeled you back in. I'm going to see mm -hmm. Nope, Jordan Peele's movies, are just like Stephen King books. Oh. Stephen King books and Jordan Peele movies. They start strong. Yeah. They get you. Yeah. He must have been the master at writing school when it came to the fucking hook. Like, uh, I'm hooked, baby. Every time I'm in it, I'm like, I love it. I love it. That's creepy. That's creepy. That's some good modern horror shit I like to see. Ooh, how did he take something from a classic-ish movie, something, a horror trope that you like, but put it in his movie and made it different so it scared you in a familiar way, but yet scared you in a new way? Creepy, <laughs> creepy, creepy, creepy. His endings are weak. They bore me, Jared. I'm going to tell you, that's Going exactly off track again. like the next <gasps> movie. You deserve it, right? I do. Now, I didn't punch you. I right. hate you. I know. There's a difference. There is a big difference. Thank Amber, you, Amber Heard. Amber Heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't shit on the side of his bed. I dookied. Did a grumpy. <laughs> did a grumpy. <laughs> Shazam! Oh. Pet Cemetery. Wait, Shazam came out? Yep. In Dumb. theaters? Yeah. I thought that was a direct to Disney uh, Disney Channel movie. Mm, no, I don't no. know. Number oh, one okay. in the box office. Keep going. I keep interrupting. Shit, I already gave you the answer. <laughs> oh, no. Shazam. We're in 2016 now. First time in the box office is competing directly <sighs> with... Pet Cemetery. We're in the modern era. Yep. Okay. The new, the new Pet Cemetery yep. is um, how do I? It has a certain je ne sais quoi. Yeah. Um, it was dog shit. Hey. It was fucking trash. Yeah. yeah. Voulez-vous un peu du fromage? Oh, <laughs> All right. Uh, that was terrible. I'm gonna bleed that. Part. Yeah. No. I. Uh, so Shazam, yeah. Pet Cemetery, us, Dum Dum Dumbo, yep. and Captain Marvel, top five. <laughs> what do you think? Okay, Shazam, Captain was Marvel, number, number one. one. No, Shazam was number one. Shazam was number one. Where do you think Pet Cemetery 2 ranked? Or Pet Cemetery the Four. remake? Four. Come on, baby. If it's three, I'm going to be mad. Well, be mad because... Fuck! Oh, wait, wait. It's not number three. I said four. It's not number four. It's five? 
Not number five. It's not number two. It's number two Get the in the fuck box out of office. Here. That's right. Now, budget of $21 million. How much domestically do you think it made? Domestically, how much money was it to make? $21 million. What a joke. Uh, $21 million, I'm going to say it made $19 million. Domestically? Oh, domestically? Yeah. I'm going to say it made $5 million. No. How much? With a budget of $21 million, yeah. it made $54 million. Numbers are hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's my excuse. So I will say, according to our numbers here, yeah. that the money is in the remake, not the sequel. Uh, so so what, what's making the money? The remakes or the sequels? The remake is making the money. The remakes are making the money. So yep. now Firestarter is a remake. That is correct. I can guarantee you right now this Firestarter movie will be more successful than the original. So are we talking about... Ooh. Let's bring it in. We're trying to solve this ooh. case. I know, I was getting I appreciate- so buried in the cold case. No, I, that's smart, because now we see everything. That's true. We know, we learn things that the other detectives, a.k.a. you, uh, didn't figure out when they were first looking at the case. You but know now what? You we were my the, first yeah. partner, God damn it. Yes. I had many partners. I know. I had many. Each one shot in the back. <laughs> I don't understand what's going wasn't on. It wasn't my fault they always want to go to a dark alley. How many partners have you had? Mine or other women's? You- <laughs> You, personally, how many police partners have you had? The Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen. I had a dozen. And yet, for some reason, you have a Dirty Dozen you're lucky number 13. <laughs> so I'm so confused. Yeah. Why do all of your partners end up sleeping with your wives don't and then you get divorced? Ma- don't do any math. <laughs> I've had one wife, Uh huh. Dirty Dozen partners. And they all cheated with the same wife? <laughs> yes. And you guys are still happily married? <laughs> oh, we're married, but we ain't happily <laughs> Speak the truth, brother. All right. So we're going to go into... <clears throat> Happiness is an illusion. Okay, keep going. Okay. You're probably wondering, like me, what happened to the director of the original Firestarter in 1984, right? Nope. Have they gone on to bigger and better things? In Doubt movies? it. So Mark Lester was the director of the first Firestarter movie. Mark and Lesterine. He went on to direct Poseidon Rex in 2013. He also went on to do directing Stealing Candy in 2003. Wow, big You're record. probably wondering who's starring in that gem of a movie. Daniel Baldwin. Oh! Coolio. Wait, was Daniel Baldwin in Vampire starring James Woods? You know, I actually saw that. You watched it? Yeah, I exactly. thought we can watch it together. No, we can watch it together. Nah, I, tra- it. I ended up turning it off because ah. as soon <laughs> All right. there was like so much machismo. I guess dude, Daniel you, Baldwin and James there's Wood. Something, dude, there's something about James Wood in it that fucking movie. so weird. John Carpenter must have been behind the camera. Yeah. James Wood does yeah. whatever he wants. Oh, yeah. And John Carpenter is just like, I love it, I love it, keep it in. No, John, love it, uh, John, John Carpenter was like, listen, James, I got it on film. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> can I tell you a little secret about me? Yeah, go ahead. I have a problem. Oh. If I see an actor and I think they are phenomenal, yeah. I will... Follow the actor to hell. And I don't care what they do afterwards. <laughs> James Woods yeah. as Lester Diamond in Casino. When I was a child and as an adult now, I hope I grow up to be like him. <laughs> a fucking, what does he say? A country club pimp. I thought he was such a abusive piece of shit. I just liked his style. Oh, well. I'm doesn't? sorry. Side tra- oh, I love James. Jared, I'm sorry. Okay, keep going. So, Mark Lester, I want to tell you a couple other gems. He had some gems going on. Right after making Firestarter, he made a little movie called Commando, starring oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You ready to go to the future with me? Yes. All right, then grab my hand, buddy. We're going to the future. Whoa, the future. Whoa. All right, we just crash landed. Okay, I want to tell you this right now. Distributed by Universal Pictures. Hang on, I'm confused. We were back in time? Yeah, Oof. that doesn't make any Man, sense. And that cold case was nuts. <laughs> yeah. Okay, keep going. Of course it did. Okay. This film is produced by Jason Blum. This is a Blumhouse Productions. I couldn't find a budget for this movie. But I did a list of six remakes of classic horror movies Mm. that the Blumhouse movies have produced. Blumhouse is, this is the mindset of Blumhouse, just to let everyone know. Yeah. Let's just make as many horror movies as we can. Okay. Some of them got to be good. That's the Blumhouse mindset. And you know what? They're right. They Some of right. them are good. And and just like the classic movies uh, of old, 
they got the budgets down right. They're making the most money. They're putting the most on screen for the money that they're putting in. I love movie. shit like that. I know, exactly. I'm not dogging on them. It's a numbers game. They're I'll smart. tell you this right now. The remake, Halloween. So Blumhouse made that movie for $10 million. No. Well, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. They got Jamie Lee Curtis. Well, Ten million snakes. Sorry, but those Activia commercials are not paying the bills. She doesn't fucking need them. Oh yeah. It's good First point. off, is that what Activia does? Because she looks just fantastic for her age in those commercials. She, how much do you think, on a budget of ten million dollars, the Halloween movie made worldwide? Oh Jesus, one hundred twenty-two million. Two hundred fifty-five million. Fuck. Pretty crazy. Halloween kills. Oh. They doubled the budget at twenty million dollars. Wow. How much do you think it made worldwide? Uh, three hundred fifty million. No, one hundred thirty million dollars. Oh that movie fucking. Suck. Oh, it did. And the other reason why I bring that up is because guess who wrote that movie? Oh, oh my God. Please tell me it was Dario Scarpan. <laughs> Our double agent? Oh, my God. Oh no, so you would be caught dead right I there. haven't looked up a picture because I don't want my imagination to die. Never meet your heroes, kid. Dario Scarpan is a tan, beautiful Spanish man with a fantastic beard. Always wears white. Oh, my God. Oh, damn it all. Okay. Okay, so the writer is Scott Teams. He wrote... Firestarter, the remake, the one that we're going to be watching this yes. weekend. He also wrote Halloween Kills. That movie was dog shit. Did you watch it? Yeah. It was terrible. I've seen most horror movies. Okay, would you say the writing was the biggest problem of Halloween Kills? Because I would say it is. Now, I don't know if you remember, but they say evil dies tonight. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, and then it doesn't. Four times. Right. By different characters. Right. Now, I might blame the writer, or I might blame... The editor. Let me tell you this. Yeah. A writer can write, and somebody wants it, but when you're there mm. on set, some producer should grow up and say, can we cut some a, of these? A line producer? Right, but yeah. they won't. Like, oh, no, not Jamie a line Lee producer. Curtis said Someone, that. No, it Why doesn't do even matter. Because a line producer, yeah. they're jo- I'm guessing, mm. their job is to make sure that you say the lines correctly. Right. They don't get to be like, oh, take that out. No, no, no. I'm talking about like an executive, I'm the money, baby. When we make money, it goes in my pocket. That kind of fucking guy yeah. should stand up and go, why is she, Why are they saying that nine times? So the editor, Timothy Alverson. Now, he's created in 2009, Orphan. 2011, bringing it back to Liam Neeson, Unknown. Mm. Orphan scared the shit out of me. That was a good one. That Orphan was a good one. True story, by the way. Really? Yep. Not based off a true story. 2012, Bullet to the Head. No, Sylvester so, Stallone first fighting name Jason is... Momoa. All right, in 2014, The Devil's Hand. 2015, yeah. Insidious Chapter 3. Yeah. 2015, Sinister 2. Yeah, 2016, yeah. The Darkness. 2018, yeah. Halloween. Yeah. 2021, Halloween Kills. Holy, That's the editor, baby. Can I tell you something right now? Yeah. I didn't know I've seen so many of these this editor's movies. Yeah. That's really... When you read so these he lists, might know what I'm he's always doing. blown. Mm. Say it again. <laughs> I'm always blown away. All right, perfect. Cinematographer, Kareem Hussain. Abdul-Jabbar. Oh, sorry. Kareem Hussein. Yeah. One of my favorite movies that I saw back in 2011 was Hobo with a Shotgun. Yo, you watched Starring that? home Hold video on. action movie star, Ruckard Howard. Yeah! <laughs> At this house, we fucking love Ruckard Howard, baby. You bring the ruck in here. woo You bring the ruck. Now, here's where I'm scared. A lot of modern horror movies. Yeah. Yep. They don't know how to build suspense. They don't know what scares people. And it's just so embarrassing to even watch them. And I'm always disappointed. Every time I go see a horror movie, it's me waiting at my house for my date to pick me up at prom. Every time. All right, go ahead. So here's what I'm nervous the most. We got a season editor. And as we locked up the last person, yes, Joe Francis. Jesus, you did. And then I was like, I'll put, the, together. I'll put the key over here. And then yeah. you just threw the key away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got a seasoned editor. Okay? Yes. We all know movies are made in three parts, so we are in good hands. The writer made three movies. Halloween Kills, not necessarily. Okay, so buddy, buddy with the editor. Or cinematographer. Yeah, and, no, the director, and the director has only done one movie prior to this. What is the movie? The Vigil. Also produced. Oh, The Vigil. By... Blumhouse and budget unknown, but made worldwide one point eight million dollars. <laughs> now here's the other thing: Blumhouse. Now Blumhouse is famous for small production, uh, for uh, small budgets. Budgets. Weed Road Pictures, Boulder Light Pictures, and Angry Adam Pictures Yeesh. are also producing this movie. Okay. So we got what is that? 
Well, Four? Yeah, but do you want to know what it is? Yeah, go. Uh, Blumhouse uh, probably gives the fattest chunk of money. Blumhouse releases the film. Blumhouse, yeah. you know what I mean? Blumhouse, oh, so they Blumhouse pay is for like the most. Right. So they're like $5 million. Right. And then the rest is like, you fucking, you know, handle this stuff. You handle, and then they delegate to the piss poor other picture shots or they hire them. Like, oh, we need somebody with this and that. And then they get them and then they put them in the thing. It's all about credits. Now, here's what, after watching the trailer, this is what I put together. Yes. So Blumhouse is already dipping their fingers into Stephen King's pie. Now, later on, they have some upcoming movie adaptations after Firestarter uh-huh. is Christine, the killer car. I'm sorry. Hang on. Yeah. You just said they're dipping their fingers into Stephen King's pie. Mm-hmm. And you're making it seem like Stephen King... They're the first ones to do it? No, not even that. You're mm-hmm. just making it seem like Stephen King made a beautiful plump pie and then put it on the window still to cool, and then the Blumhouse people are coming over and stealing it. Oh, no. This is like a, the American pie that, yeah. ev- no! that has that dick-shaped no, that everybody wrong. started They're not with, molesting uh, his pie. No, they're not? No. I you don't have it. to molest that pie. Here's what's happening. What they're doing is they're giving that pie is out Steven, there. They're probably giving uh, Stephen King yeah. a fat boy check. Sure. And then they're just like, can we eat this pie? And then he's like, buddy, you can do whatever you want to that pie. That's what's happening. They're not stealing the he's pie. Like, he's, so he's whoring out his pie. He's been around the block longer than the Blumhouse people when it comes to movies. Yeah. Considering he's been making them since the 70s, uh, yeah. adaptating his books. You so know, here's my gumshoe stuff. take. Yes. Oh, my gumshoe yes. take is this. Because we're detectives. So I think Blumhouse... Since this is the beginning, and they're making Christine next. Yes. This is the beginning of the K C U. K C K being King C Cinematic U Universe. Just in case I knew, but just in case other people didn't know, where Firestarter K C U <laughs> and Cujo right. drive around in Christine, uh-huh. the murderous car. Just in case you didn't know what Christine was. Fair enough. No, I know it's a Plymouth. Did you know that? To battle. Did you know that old man who's seen all the fucking movies before I was born? It's so <laughs> true. And I think the Firestarter girl has a little loyal dog named Cujo, and they're driving around in their murderous call card, Christine, and they are going to battle Johnny Smith and the Dead Zone. The uh, Universal tried to do the dark universe. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, I like the Wolfman, of the course. remake. I yeah. thought that was fucking awesome. Did you see the Invisible Man remake? No, I'm, I don't like what? Elizabeth Moss. You didn't watch it? No. We're watching that. No. Doesn't, he, doesn't he just like wear a suit from a science lab? Yeah. Okay. You want to know something? Yeah. I watched the trailer and the part where she throws paint on him. Yeah. And he has the ripples on his body. They kind of look like a golf ball. Yeah. Never seen the movie. Saw the trailer. That's what I fucking guessed. My friend saw the movie. Confirmed it. And I went, what a fucking piss poor trailer. Hold on. I got some more. Oh, oh my God. More, more okay. suspects? Yeah. Yeah. I've never dealt with this man. Now, you're going to love this. Okay. Guess who they got? To be the the composer for this, uh, the guy from Oingo Boingo, close John Carpenter. <laughs> no shit, John Carpenter <laughs> and his son Cody Carpenter are doing the composition for this movie. This isn't the first time I don't. I think this definitely isn't the first time his son has uh, helped compose. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he's yeah, done yeah. it before. He did him. Halloween Kills. Oh, he Halloween. did. His son did it. Yeah, oh, okay, I think they're cool. both like yeah, yeah. involved. Like, yeah, well, they're you, all I mean, part fuck, of the band. Grew, my dad grew up making pizzas. That's all I know how to do. Yeah, it there sucks. you go. Okay, Why so can't I you know how to make you. movies? So, okay, I couldn't. I scoured the fucking internet. Couldn't yeah. find it. And the internet being just a quick little like. Firestarter 2022 right. starring Zach. No, I know that, but the internet? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, like the cool. World Wide Web. <laughs> exactly. Oh, okay, cool. So I scoured the internet for it. Couldn't find a budget, but I imagine this budget's anywhere from like 15 to $20 million. Oh, that's a really nice number. Now, I want to tell you this. How much do you think this movie's going to make opening weekend? Opening weekend, opening weekend, opening weekend. Brrr. Nine point five million dollars. I'm gonna go big just for the following of Zachy F, as they call him on the set. Okay, I'm going to say Zachy F does not have. Okay, a you haven't been anymore. to the set, so don't call him Zachy F. <laughs> I'll call him Zachy F. Mr. Efron, thank you. Does not have a following anymore. Really? Yeah. No. 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 This movie, I think. Because I can't guarantee anymore because I am fucking embarrassed myself last time. I was a million dollars off. That was really Hey, we both were. That was really embarrassing. But we still I caught think the this killer. movie is going to make $5 million. 
Five mi- oh man, you make my 9.5 sound dumb now. Well, I want to tell you, you're uh. not that far off because guess what? In the United States and Canada, this film was projected to gross eight to thirteen million dollars. It's opening oh, weekend. If we can hit nine, remember you can't go over. Uh uh-uh. uh This is like sports gambling has yeah. to win by three. You know what I'm saying? How much did I say? Six? No, you just said five. Okay, yeah, I say five. Five to six million. You should say five. Say five point nine. Five point nine. And I went nine point five. I love it. Okay, so five point nine million dollars. Okay, I think opening weekend because it's not advertised. There's no heat. This shit. This fire starter has no heat. You just did, baby. It has nothing. That was good. Nobody fucking cares about this movie coming out. Here, let me get. Let me get one. Um, go. The go. It's not. Um, the fire starters. It's not. Um. It's not, uh, it's not, uh, uh, it's, it's not, <laughs> he'll get there. Uh, it's not, um, putting a fire under people <laughs> to see <laughs> it. Not, it's not putting That's a fire under about. the ass to go see it. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll tell you what, what do you, mm-hmm. what do you want out of this movie? After watching the original, what do you want out of this movie? Ooh. ooh okay. I want, uh, more and I'm, um, we've seen the trailer. Yeah. So things that I've seen in the trailer that I, as I'm watching the original, I thought was missing. I already saw in the trailer more of the girl uh, and her regular life because the original just starts with them. Man, we're on the run. We're on the lamb, baby. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I need know. like, sh- like, let me care, you know, because the thing so is don't jump in the action. Well, here's the thing. So you're people, saying the original jumped in the action right away. Now don't read books. So cute. People now don't read books. So when you back then people read books. So when you're going to see a book at a, into a movie, mm. you're like, I already know everything, so I know what's going on. We don't read books now, so we dumb. So just sh- break everything down like we dumb. Didn't read a book. Yes, the original went right into the action of them running away. I want to see the home life. I want to see her everyday life. I want to get to know them, know their routine, and then it can go awry, if I'm saying that right. I want it to go, you know, I want it to go to left field and go, here we go. And so now I know how they feel. It's like, oh, they broke the routine. Like, woo, this is crazy. I'd like to see that. I'd also like to see uh, more the shop. I want, I want, I want that to impact more. I want them to be more ruthless. I want when people to get in their way for them to almost be like agents from Matrix, just kill them. Like, no, no, no. This is more bigger. This is the government's. We ain't going to play around. Get rid of people. Hurt people. And, oh, also, I don't know what the history of Firestar is. I didn't read the book. Those are for nerds. Um, I want to, I would love to see, like, is the shop, do they have more kids? Do, do they, I'd like to just see a bunch of kids and they're all dead. Because the shop tests them until they die. So now I know the risk. Like, oh, if they get this girl, they're going to kill her. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see, and <clears throat> uh, that's pretty much it. And just because we're in the super world era now of uh, movies, um, I'd like to see more, you know, you know, more like brain power being used. Like, like it. crumple a guy with your brain. I want to ask shit. you, do you think Zach Efron is going to have his the telekinesis power? <clears throat> yes. And okay. I'm only saying yes because I think you're going to say no. I'm going to think he does not have the telekinesis power. I think his I love wife to got the power, who then Ooh, died. Ooh, interesting. Can, you know what? It would be more interesting if he didn't have the power, and he's taking a super powerful girl where <clears throat> the, the tension of you can't control her at all. Right. Because you're a regular Joe like me, bitch. Yeah. Uh, and your hey, daughter's yeah. a fire starter. Why didn't he starter? control his daughter a little bit more when she's getting out of control with mind control? Well, they said a line in the film, actually. Um, I think Dr. Picoche or whatever, uh-huh. the guy with the bow tie. Um, he was like, um, <laughs> he was like, uh, uh, his brain is going. He won't be able to control her or some shit oh, like that. Oh, that's right. He did remember that? I wonder if he is controlling uh, the daughter slightly with the mind. But at the same time, oh. would you? Like, if I had a kid and she could start fires, man, I'd hit the circus circuit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Make them pennies and dimes. Wait, the circus already pimping carny. out a kid? No, it's there, pimping like, out. It's I'm showing sorry. her a future. Pouring out. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I think, um, real quick, do you want to say anything about, yeah, what are your opinions? Uh, senior, okay. So senior, what, senior what detective. 
Discount at the Sizzler. Well, I wish that, uh, hey, you take advantage of that. Tuesday night, Saturday steak night, baby. Now, here's what I think is going to happen in this movie, and it's just not going to be good. I think it's going to be a run-of-the-mill remake. I don't think they have a bigger star than Zach Efron. Zac Efron. You don't need a bigger Mr. star, Efron. baby. High School Musical. And I don't think he's going to have any powers. Do you think he's going to die in this movie? I do not think he's going to die. And I'm only saying this stuff because, like I said, I love to gamble, so I'm going to go opposite than you. I do have a problem. Help me. Is that a cry for help? Yes. Um, If he does die, we won't see that he died. Oh, okay. And he'll come back in another movie. It's her father. If they're making the dumb MCU, Stephen King universe, the KCU. So we wrap this up here? Let's wrap it up. I think we should wrap it up real quick. Yep. Tell us our suspects again. Okay. So we got... Director, Keith Thomas, who's only done one other movie before, The Vigil, and that's okay. for Blumhouse. Uh, <clears throat> Scott Teams, who wrote Halloween Kills. That was terrible. So Crash. it's got two strikes against it already. Damn, you're Cinematographer, hardcore. Kareem has Hussein. Oof, butchered uh, I'd the I'd say name. he's only got one little gem in a pile of shit <laughs> called The Hobo <laughs> with a Shotgun. We love that. In 2011, starring... Video action movie star, Rutgerd Howard. <laughs> that's right. And the editor is definitely not going to go to jail because if this movie is even remotely watchable, it's going to be because of Timothy Alverson. Oh, come on down. So on that note, are you excited to see this movie? Uh, No. (laughs) (laughs) Neither am I. 9.5, don't forget it.